Well, to discuss this, I'm joined now from Vienna by political analyst Klaus Jürgens. Marcus Howe is the head of research and analysis at Viennese Consulting. And Andre Walker is a political commentator and correspondent in Windsor in the UK. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Klaus Jürgens, you know, my mother always told me, don't go to Ibiza. You'll do things you might regret later on in life. I guess the Austrians are learning the hard way. How much of a shock was the scandal to you, Klaus? Well, good afternoon. Uh, yes, indeed, uh, Ibiza seems to be a kind of troublemaker for the FPO. Now, honestly, it was an absolute shock to me when the news broke during the last weekend. I literally could not believe it. I was not one of those who actually clapped their hands and said, wow, wonderful, now the far-right party has a problem. Not at all. First of all, what video to me, with all modesty, to not the outspoken in this case, you revealed a total disregard towards one's own country, towards right. democracy, and not knowing that this was a setup, simply believing it was true, basically selling out your own country, your own democratic values. Absolutely right. shocking. Right, right. And Marcus, how even though this was a setup and the woman was an actress, the appetite. Um, that the politicians had to work with the Russians. What does that, that tell us about Austria's far right? And perhaps they have had previous ties to the Kremlin, maybe. Yes, well, I think that it says a lot about their, first of all, their ideological affiliations, this uh, skepticism towards establishment uh, politics in Europe. But at the same time, I think it reflects their complete lack of scruples really that they will take assistance from anywhere they can find it um and you know maximize that you, you use that as leverage to gain uh influence right. within the austrian system andre walker given that sebastian kurtz responded swiftly angrily called for snap elections even though he is facing a no confidence vote do you do you feel that he's he's done all the right things in the aftermath of the leak well, I think it's an incredibly difficult situation to deal with, isn't it? Although it has to be said, in the case of the Freedom Party, there was certainly a fair amount of evidence from countries like the United Kingdom that there were significant concerns with the Freedom Party's connection with Russia. Clearly, this is not a Russian connection in as much as it is, it is a sting by people who are keen to deal with Russia in a way that is seen as illegitimate. Look, I mean, I think all I can say in response to, to any of this is that the Chancellor does have a duty to protect um, Austria from corruption. And if his coalition partner is going to behave in a corrupt way, then, you know, he needs to, he needs to stamp down hard on that. Um, the Freedom Party have had problems in the past. They appear to be fairly united on this occasion. I know that previous uh, stints in government have led to the party kind of falling to bits. What will happen in the future, I think, is quite right. difficult to tell uh, in terms of the results right. of the elections. And, uh, Andre, in many ways, it's almost like when there's a, a, a priest or a sheikh caught in a, in a sex scandal, right? Because with the, with the far right, they always say, love us or hate us, but we're clean. The, the leftists, the liberals, they're dirty, they're corrupt, they're with the elites, we're the clean guys. We're going to come and clean out the system and corruption, right? So in that sense... Has this damaged not only the right wing in Austria, but might it make people question the, the right wing elsewhere across the continent? Well, I think that if you are a, a pro-European, uh, Euro-federalist, Giva Hofstadt type person, then you would see um, populism or, or moves to be more de democratic across Europe as a pan-European phenomenon, whereas actually I see it as a series of individual campaigns in countries that have had their democracy taken away by Brussels. And so the fact that um, the Austrian Freedom Party has behaved badly and is indeed a far-right party, I would see as having very, very little effect on somewhere, say, like the United Kingdom, where we would expect uh, Nigel Farage to do extremely well in the European elections. Marcus, do you agree with that? Because some see this as a blow um, to those attempts by Salvini and others to create that alliance of nationalist European parties. If Austria, which was supposed to be a success story within that camp, is suffering such a major scandal on the eve of a very important election. 
Yes, well, the timing is certainly uh, suspect. Um, and there was a, an article by the former deputy head of the German Foreign Intelligence Service who posited that this could have been done by uh, foreign intelligence services and without wanting to get into far-right conspiracy here, and this is speculation, but he does imply that Mossad might have been behind it, given concerns that um, the growing far-right bloc in Europe um, is, it gives rise to increasing uh, anti-Semitism, and they wanted to move in and take this right. crucial link in the chain out and set an example, given that the FU are a link between the northern far right and the southern far right. right. Um, I think there are holes you can shoot in that argument, uh, for sure, but it shows the stakes, the okay. international stakes okay. of the Th that's situation. That's really interesting. So, Klaus Jürgens, firstly, tell me who you think was behind the sting, because that's fascinating, even though it's just going to be speculation. And, and secondly, do you think that this might impact the European elections? Well, very briefly, uh, on the first point, I just picked up all the newspapers while coming back here, and there are a bus with conspiracy theories. Now, what is emerging so far is that a Vienna-based lawyer and a private security expert in Munich somehow set up the first meeting between Johann Budenos and this lady, and then later on, actually, Heinz Rick, Christian Strache, of course, was uh, put into this meeting in Ibiza. So you could actually say the trigger effect was a meeting between Kudenos and the fake lady and two other men. Is a foreign intelligence service behind it? I, I not necessarily believe in conspiracy theories. I think, yes, it is not impossible, but what about if someone who always had something against the far-right party here, someone who, who were just wanting to, to lay a trap for someone and then mm -hmm. just wait for the moment and no better chance doing this before an important election to put it into the public. Perhaps my 51% assumption would rather go into this direction. Secondly, two options again. Will it have an impact on the vote which started already in the Netherlands and the United Kingdom today on Sunday here in Austria? Some people say actually people who supported the FPÖ before will now come out even more in force Why? because they think foul play. So this is one option. The other option is that the opposition, the Greens, the Socialists, the Liberals might win bigger than expected. Will Sebastian Kurz's party come out 40-50% majority? I would not think so. Right. Fascinating. So, I mean, Andre, I guess what they're trying to say on the far right is that this guy is an idiot. Heinz Christian Strach was just dumb and drunk and maybe high or whatever it was and, you know, the year was a Russian woman and he promised her the world. But is that a deflection from the fact that the FPO might be fundamentally rotten and corrupt? Well, I don't know whether the Freedom Party are fundamentally rotten or corrupt. But, what, but the experience that I've had over my time, uh, both in politics and in journalism, is that very often these stings are something that the uh, media will get very excited about and people like us will get very excited about but the public are relatively impervious to. And so I'm not sure necessarily that the damage uh, that's, that people hope will be done by this will in fact uh, materialize. But I will say one thing on the, on, the, on the subject of Mossad. I mean, I think it is only fair to point out that the threat to Jewish people and the rise of anti-Semitism across Europe is almost universally the responsibility of the far left, not uh, the right, and certainly not the populist movement. And I also do think it is unfair to equate uh, to equate the Freedom Party, which is far right, with more legitimate populist movements, the kind of centre right. right that are emerging. Bluntly, I think those of us that believe the European Union is an affront to democracy are not fascists and not members of the Freedom Party. Having, having said that, uh, no, okay. But having said that, Andre, because in the details of the video, right, as they're deciding, okay, we're gonna. So you have this alleged investor, the actress, going, I'm going to uh, pump in all this money and I'm going to buy a newspaper. We're going to get rid of all the lefties and all the centrists and so on and we'll, we'll fill it with right-wingers. And then he says, I'll give you these contracts in return. And interestingly, he goes on to say, we're going to make it like Orban's hungry. So they find common ground with Orban. Now, tell me how you feel about that because they, they see or Orban's... 
uh, approach to Hungary as a sort of blueprint for what they wanted to have here? Yeah, well, look, I don't believe in necessarily telling people how to live their lives in, in other countries. But I would make one point about um, funding of newspapers and government contracts to newspapers. If you look at the United Kingdom, of the national newspapers that we have, there is one that stands up as wholly unprofitable, and that is the Guardian newspaper. But the Guardian newspaper is funded 70 or 80 percent by government contracts, uh, and, it, and in exchange, it is a statist and leftist newspaper. Now, look, I don't believe that government should be financing media, but at the same time, given that the left does it right across Europe, you can understand the temptation for government ministers from the right to do the same thing. They ought not to do it, but I can understand why they do. But and on the no, issue of Victor Orban... Yeah, but Andrei, there's, look, no, there's think, no evidence that the Guardian's actually filled with lefties and someone in, go uh, someone in government is then dishing out contracts to those who control the Guardian no, I think, I think, favors. Oh, look. No, sure, but I think there is an implicit understanding that local government and uh, left-wing local authorities will finance The Guardian in exchange for political support. I mean, I don't think that's a particularly controversial uh, thought. But obviously, across Europe, in the case of Viktor Orban, look, Viktor Orban is absolute Satan to pro-European, uh, uh, you know, left-wing, centre-left and, I suppose, establishment figures. But he's somebody who's incredibly popular in his own country, and I can understand why people want to emulate him. I live in a very different country, Britain, and hopefully soon we won't have to worry any of this or worry about any of this when we leave the EU for good. Something that Andre said, Marcus Howe, is that, well, what was on offer in that meeting is not that controversial if you analyse it. And he gave uh, an analogy or two and an example or two, a counterexample. Do you agree with that? Um... I mean, I think in the context of uh, Austrian politics, that's not an entirely unfair comment. Um, I mean, Strache did, of course, say in the in the video that, you know, this is how the system works. Everyone else is doing the same. They're taking these covert um, uh, donations through associations and so on. And Austria is, of course, in its post-war form, a clientelist state. So, you know, there are within the party senior politicians who are close to... Uh, very wealthy business people, and so on. However, I would say I, I would say one thing. So first of all, what Strache was mooting, if he was being serious about it and not just engaging in drunken bravado, I mean, what he was suggesting is would be grand corruption were he right. to enter into office. Right. And um, and yeah, I mean, further to which is also the fact that the FPÖ has made so much ground. You know, sort of made so much of trying to be this. Uh, party that's going to clean up the system, that's going to root out the, you know, party dictatorship corruption, as they call it, you know, from the left and so on. I mean, to say that on the one hand and then to act like this on the other is, mm. is, is, is pretty outrageous, to be honest. So, Klaus Jürgens, if we go to those elections, are voters going to rebel and react the other way? And are we going to see Austria's entire political system shift maybe to the center left as a result of everything that happened after the corruption scandal? It is not entirely possible. Now, what my esteemed colleague said is absolutely right. It is not only the FPO which is in the spotlight. After all, it is still Chancellor Sebastian Kurz who invited them to share the government. Now, of course, he can whitewash, gold plate his own Things and why did he uh, go into a coalition with the FPO? But ultimately, he said himself, I'm setting up a new People's Party, the Neue Volkspartei. I want to get rid of the old systems, including corruption of dealings behind closed doors. I want to have a new concept, a new way of politics, a new way of dealing with the people and their concerns. And ultimately, he himself must face criticism. You're coalition partner did not play up to that role. Now, what do you do? Do you want to ever consider a new coalition with the FPÖ? Do you say we want a grand coalition? Now it is decided we go into snap elections. I would not be surprised if the liberals in particular, partly the Greens and the socialists would actually gain not only 
four days from today, but in the upcoming Austrian elections right. for national parliament. Yes, indeed. Yeah, no, well, they're sensing opportunity, no doubt. Klaus Jürgens, Andre Walker and Marcus Howe, I've got to move on, but I thank you all for joining us.